What's up and good morning guys, welcome back to another video. Now today we're gonna be touching on possibly another controversial subject. So if you're gonna get all butt hurt, uh, you might not want to watch this video, but we're gonna dive in head first and we're gonna tackle this. Now keep in mind, I'm just gonna put it out there, it's kind of like my is it okay to lift a two wheel drive truck video. It's your truck, do what you want with it. Now, this video, we're gonna be going off of my personal opinion, I know, it's my opinion, doesn't have to be yours. So let's just dive right on into it. As you guys can see here, I mean, it's not quite as evident as probably what we're gonna be talking about, but I have dropped the rear of my truck, being that it's on airbags, as low as it'll go to, not quite a squatted position, but it's lower in the back. And if we're talking about squatting your truck, let's kind of define what that is. But I will say, first of all, California tends to do things first and then it ends up ruining our state and then the rest of the country decides, oh, we should follow them and do whatever they did. And, you know, I apologize for that. It's not me, you know, it's some other hippies up in California doing their stuff. But the whole drop in the rear end of your truck thing, I mean, I know a lot of states have their own name for it, but in my humblest of opinions, I would have to say it started in California as the Cali Lean. Now the Cali Lean is not as extreme as what we're talking about today. It's basically the front end or the rear end is a couple inches off in difference. So, you know, you just have your front just a little bit higher or your rear just a little bit lower. So obviously being that social media didn't really exist back when I first got into the truck scene, I mean, I guess it did maybe like the MySpace days, but there wasn't like a a community of, you know, people posting truck pictures. So I'm just going off of basically what I saw. And in like the early 2000s, you know, there were quite a few Cali leaned trucks rolling around our area. And you know, it's not a horrible look, but it was just never my cup of tea. I've always liked the look of level trucks. It just makes more sense to me, you know, maybe it's the, the contractor in me that likes to see things plumb and level, but I don't know, for some reason I've always liked level trucks. Then you get the you know onslaught of Instagram and all of a sudden you can really start to see truck communities and how different parts of the country or different parts of the world really kind of evolve into their own style of trucks. And well with that, the world got to witness the Carolina Squat. I know there's a couple different names for it, but the Carolina Squat is kind of like the, the broad spectrum of what it means and obviously what we're talking about is this right here. Now let's jump into what it is, why it is, how come it's done, who thought of it, whatever. Let's just kind of jump into the nitty gritty of what the Carolina Squat is. Essentially, you take your truck and you lift the front, I'd say probably about four to six inches seems to be the range that everybody's kind of doing it in. There's not too many like 12 inch lifted fronts, but I'd say in the, the four to six inch range, you lift the front and then you drop the rear as low as you could possibly drop it until essentially your tires fill the wheel well there. And being that it seems like the goal is to fill the wheel well, that also means you need smaller tires. So it's not like you're gonna be doing this on some 37s, probably not 35s, usually like in the 33 street tire range. Now one of the huge downsides I can see for having any type of squatted truck, and now mind you, as low as my truck goes, it's not anywhere near how low these guys go with their trucks but you really do lose front end visibility. I mean, you're pointed up in the air at the sky. So being that my truck is adjustable, I'm gonna try and kind of convey that by showing you guys some different heights here. So let's just, let's take it up to level there, right? So right here is my truck sitting level. And then notice how many parking spaces you can see in front of me. Now, if we drop it down, you really start to lose a lot of your visibility up front. Which also means not only can you not see in front, but it also means your headlights are pointed pretty much straight up at the sky. Now, if you're trying to light up your buddy while he's climbing up in the tree, you know, trying to retrieve a, a lost cat or something, then hey, it makes sense. But if you're trying to light up the road in front of you, which usually most people are with headlights, uh, you're kind of really defeating the purpose of that. So I know the lighting's a little weird here, but I decided to do a better test. So we've pulled up behind a car here and I'm gonna try and keep the camera head height right here. So if we go head height, you can see there is definitely a car right there in front of my truck. Obviously this is with the truck leveled. Now here's where you're gonna see the disadvantage of the Carolina squat. So if we drop the truck back down, you really no longer see the car there anymore. And that's pretty dangerous, you know? Now the good thing about having air ride is if you're, you know, level, let's say that car was a little bit smaller and you couldn't see, the cool thing is if you ever really need to check, you just raise the rear bags all the way up. 
and you get a nice good view in front of you. Now to me, one of the, the biggest concerns with squatting your truck is obviously practicality and usefulness. And I'm sure you guys are saying, you got quite the obnoxious vehicle out there, but I think time and time again, this thing has actually proven itself to be useful. It tows just fine. You can still put stuff in the bed. You know, you drives and rides and whatever just fine. The only thing is you really can't park in parking garages and you gotta lift stuff higher into the bed. And I'm willing to make that sacrifice because like I said, it is still extremely useful to me. Now obviously we all know when a truck comes from the factory, the rear end is typically a little bit higher and that's for good reason. They kinda, they're overcompensating for the fact that you're gonna be either putting a load in the bed or you're gonna be hooking a trailer to it and that way by the time you add that extra weight to the rear of the truck, it either levels out or it squats just a little bit. If they didn't have the rear end higher and then you go to low stuff in, it would obviously start to squat almost a little bit too much. And too much is just that, it's too much. You know, obviously when putting a load in your vehicle, it's kind of the same way as like weighting a trailer. You know, you want your weight to be in the correct orientation, otherwise you start to run the risk of, you know, going out of control, losing control. Same thing runs with the truck. If you have way too much weight in the rear, Number one, you're overloading the crap out of the rear, but number two, you're picking up a lot of weight off of your front tires. And obviously you use the front tires to steer and turn, so you want some decent amount of weight on the front. You don't wanna just be picking up so much weight on the rear that the front is almost floating. You hit a bump at a weird angle at the wrong time, you're trying to turn, stuff can go wrong. But obviously, you know, I like to build ridiculous vehicles and I'm not gonna tell anybody to build a vehicle just for practicality. Obviously, I've got two trucks. One is a lot more work practical than the other, just in the sense that I could throw stuff in it and not worry about it. So if you wanna build a completely showish vehicle, then by all means, go for it. But if we're talking looks on a squatted truck, here's kind of where, you know, it's kind of like the two-wheel drive thing, only worse in the fact that people are gonna call you out on it. Well, the same thing's gonna to apply to a squatted truck. And probably the thing people are gonna hear the most is, well, what happened? Did you run out of money lifting the front that you had nothing left to do to the rear? And to be quite honest, I mean, it, it really does look like it's just an incomplete lift. It's kind of like the guys that take pre-runner trucks and they'll put a, a decent front end on it, flared fenders, they'll flare out the bed sides in the rear and just leave completely factory rear suspension, which at that point kind of defeats the purpose of a pre-runner because if that rear suspension's factory and it bucks you like crazy, you're really not gonna be doing a whole lot of off-roading with that thing. And now mind you, I did at one point own a lifted truck where I lifted the front end. Um, we didn't go blocks in the rear, we actually went up a step from blocks and we did the springs in the rear, which were actually, you know, 12 inch lift springs, I would guess you would say from Atlas. So it wasn't the least complete way to lift a rear end, but at the end of the day, after owning that truck, I decided on this next truck build, like, no, let's fully build the rear end as well. Hence the reason I went with the Ultimate Air Ride 4-Link rear setup here, because now I feel like the rear has gotten just as much, if not more, attention than the front of the truck, and it is actually a much, much more complete truck in my eyes. So from my perspective, I would absolutely never squat a truck. You know, I've told you in the last video, I would lift a two-wheel drive truck if there was a lift kit available for the Ford that I have right now. But squatting a truck is just, it's too far for me. It is not my cup of tea, it's not my style. I could just see it being a pain in the butt to drive. I could see it being impractical. There's just so many negative things that to me would definitely prevent me from doing that. But like I said earlier, you know, it's your truck, it's your money. I'm not gonna tell anybody how to spend their money, how to build their truck. You guys do your things. All I wanted to do was just kind of give my perspective on the whole the whole trend of squatting trucks. And of course, with this stupid time change, it's already dark. It's getting really hard to work, run home, and uh, you know, put out some content for the YouTube channel, but I'm making it happen for you guys. I actually have some new reverse lights that I've shown up for the BBB build back there. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to swing by the PO box and pick them up today, but hopefully, uh, in the next day or so, I can go grab those throws on the truck and test them out and see how much nicer they are because obviously the yellow halogen ones on there are no bueno. Uh, check out my sweet new dishwasher that Chris delivered for me the other day. And well, even though it's dark out and the day is kind of over in terms of what we can pull off, video filming, daytime, whatever, construction, uh, well, now it's time I jump in to all of the work Ford orders. We've got a bunch of XL decals I need to get finished just in time 
for Christmas. The last few orders here going out. And I know it's kind of a mess right now, but I cranked out a ton of decals the other day, but we've added a couple little things to the decal station over here. One of which being something that I really needed for a long time here. And that is essentially my version of a light box. Because well, when you're making multicolored decals, there's actually an assembly process to them. And you need to be able to see through them to layer them. So I made this quick little light box, folds up against the wall, does what I needed to do, and it is much more efficient in terms of getting decals made. But anyways, with that, we're gonna wrap up this video. As always, thank you guys for watching. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please click the subscribe button now that we do not miss out on any future content. Don't forget to give this video a like, AKA a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to check out workforwardapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you gotta be willing to work for it. You guys are the best. I'm out. Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah.